mind as the instrument of acquiring knowledge so as to increase its creative capacity leading to his inner growth and self-fulfillment. The name Nalanda comprises two words Nalam and Da. Nalam in Sanskrit means a lotus flower, the symbol of knowledge. Da means to give. Nalanda therefore means to give knowledge. The ancient Nalanda Mahavihara is considered to be the oldest university in the world where students not only from India but from all over the world came to study. Although the first visitor here was the Chinese Fahian, it was in fact from Huensang, the famous Chinese monk scholar, that we learn about Nalanda in the 7th century AD. Huensang lived and studied here for six years. According to him, 10,000 students and 1,500 professors lived on the campus. For nearly 500 years, Nalanda was the center of the academic world as the greatest institution of Buddhist learning. Besides Pali literature, Chinese and Tibetan sources give a lot of information about the ancient University of Nalanda, its curricula, its scholars, its international status, its contribution to the development of learning, the success of kings who patronized it, and also about its decline and disappearance from the academic world. Although the entire site is said to cover 16 square kilometers, what we now see at Nalanda is approximately just one and a half square kilometer that has been excavated. Excavations date Nalanda from the 3rd to the 6th century AD. On the 8th January 1812, Francis Buchanan was the first person to initiate a survey of the area. All that he saw were huge mounds. And he had no clue as to what they were. It was Sir Alexander Cunningham who, after referring to Huensang's diaries, for the first time identified the complex of ancient ruins of the Mahavihara. In 1870, he excavated some portions of this site. But more systematic excavations began in 1916 under Spooner, which continued for 20 years. Finally, Sri Hiranan Shastri completed the major portion of the work. Diggings revealed a university divided into two parts. The Chaityas or temples faced east. The monasteries on the other hand faced west. Of the 106 monasteries Huensang mentions having seen here at Nalanda, only 11 have been excavated. Each monastery had a lecture hall and residential quarters where 35 monks lived. But in the area of 1.5 square kilometers, only 330 rooms have been excavated. The octagonal well, kitchen and storerooms are all clearly visible. According to excavation records, we can see an area from the 5th century AD when Nalanda was under the royal patronage of the Guptas. It was then reconstructed by Harshwardhan 
the king of Kannauj in the 7th century AD. and was lastly taken over by the Pala kings in the 9th century. These three different levels are clearly visible in the structures here. There were three great libraries situated in the library quarter a sacred place known as Dharma Ganj, but these have not yet been excavated. The two chief disciples of the Buddha, Dhamma Senapati Sariputra and Mahamoghalana, also hailed from Nalanda. Sariputra died in the same room he was born in. When the Maurya Emperor Ashoka visited here in the 3rd century BC, he constructed a stupa on the relics of Sariputra as a memorial of the Dhamma Senapati. It was reconstructed seven times by different rulers. Around the stupa are many statues from the 5th century AD of Lord Buddha and his two disciples, Sariputra and Moghalana, and of when he attained enlightenment and of the Bodhisattva. The 6th century BC was an important landmark in the history of mankind. This was the time when a prince left his family and fortune in search of answers to the great questions of life and death. Siddhartha Gautam, known as the Buddha, the enlightened one, laid down a doctrine that soon spread all over the world. The Buddha urged his disciples to seek the truth within themselves he taught them that life is based on four noble truths. Life is rooted in dukkha or suffering. Suffering is caused by tanha or craving for worldly things. One can find release from suffering by eliminating craving and the way to eliminate craving is by following the eightfold path. This path consists of right understanding, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right awareness, right concentration. By complying with this, one can attain Nirvana. Having decided to devote himself to the law that he himself had discovered, to honor, respect and serve it, the Buddha was determined to spread the teachings to the best of his ability. He traveled, accompanied by his disciples.